There's seven people up in this midnight. <laughs> Bear with me for just a second. I'm trying to get this set up to where we're both on camera without having to be on each other's laps. <laughs> Okay, one second. We'll get into it here in just a minute, just getting everything set up. Also sneak, babe. <clears throat> How's everybody doing? Yeah, we're going to be talking about uh, motivation today. Uh, we're a couple things before we get started, uh, because some people are going to be watching this on playback. <coughs> I'm still getting over a thing. So sorry, but a um, couple things before we get started. We're going to be sticking to the, this one subject to make this more kind of like a podcast than a live. And the subject's going to be on motivation or lack of motivation. Uh, so I won't be taking any questions at first about, you know, cleaning products and the normal stuff that we normally do. After the live, I will likely take some um, AMA type stuff. And then um, moderators, I don't want to um, get rid of anybody except for obvious trolls. So if you get an obvious troll in here, just ban them. Um, if somebody's asking questions that are off topic, I mean, it's fine. I'm just not going to see them. So there's no need to take actions like timeouts or anything like that. I basically just want the moderators in here to get rid of buttholes. So um, that being said, we'll, we'll probably do an AMA right afterwards, but this will probably be an hour-ish um, talking about motivation and the lack of. So one quick sneak vape, and then uh, we'll dive into it. So I'm here with Jason. You guys know him as Filth. Because he's filth. I'm not putting up with it. <laughs> uh, he just got his new YouTube channel name, which is what was it again? Uh, I finally got it down and uh, and changed. I'm double checking now. I just set it up. Jason the Filth. Yeah, so Jason the Filth will be his YouTube name. You don't have it set up yet, do you, or do you? Um, I have it set up. Uh, the only thing I need to do is the uh, profile picture and background, and then I think I'm actually starting the live or do a live tonight and doing gaming. Nice. So for those of you who have never been to the channel before, uh, one, what are you doing here? Um, but two, um, some background information. Um, I'm autistic, so you're going to see me doing stuff like this a lot. It's stemming. Um, I say um a lot and I can't help it. I cut those out whenever I do my videos, but I do videos cleaning hoarder houses for free on the main channel. And we are currently building toward a uh, million subscribers. We, I think we hit 270,000 last night. If not, we're close to it today. And um, we just do a whole bunch of stuff for people for free uh, because there's a lot of people out there who need help and nobody has the funds to pay three to five thousand dollars to clean a hoarder house or on the more extreme side of that uh, upwards of like 20 grand the dumpsters alone can cost thousands so but today we're going to be talking about the biggest thing that i'm asked among most people who watch the channel which is how do you get started when you're overwhelmed and how do you get the motivation and i think that motivation is a misunderstood term so there's motivation and then there's inaction. And I'm going to explain the difference between the two and how to recognize it because understanding what it is and understanding what you're in as far as a mental state is your number one um, beast that needs to be conquered. So I think that if you're undergoing so like say depression, say you're in the middle of depression and it's not severe enough for you to be camped out in bed all the time, but it's severe enough to where you're on the couch and you're glancing into your kitchen 
and you're like, oh my God, this has to get cleaned up. This is causing me so much stress. I want to do those so bad, but I just can't quite make myself. You already have the motivation to do that. Motivation's not the issue. The motivation in that point is to get the dishes done so they stop giving you stress and that already exists in your head. The lack of motivation in this point is not the dishes, it's getting up. And so learning where to focus that is, is the biggest issue. Understanding where you're at mentally is the first step in getting those things done. So the problem isn't, I lack the motivation to do my dishes. It's the inaction of actually getting up to start them. And I do have that problem myself from time to time, especially if I'm really exhausted mentally and physically. I'll have a problem where I'll sit down and I'll think, the last thing I want to do on this planet is get up and vacuum my house, even though it's covered in dog hair. Or the last thing, hello, Barbie. <laughs> um, or the last thing that I want to do is go out in my garage and break down all these boxes because I'm tired and it's messy and it's overwhelming and I don't know where to start. So I will literally tell myself out loud, get off your ass, get off your ass right now and just stand up. And so I know that it sounds like an oversimplification but just standing up it can, can make yourself kickstart into a cleaning mode. And I think that like Jason deals with this, not on a bad level, <clears throat> but like the yard, his yard is overwhelming. His yard is huge uh, compared to most people's like city lawns. Um, it's big enough to where he needs a riding lawn mower. He has a motorized push mower and even if you've got one that's automatic, the ones that whenever you push the handle, they just automatically propel themselves. Even if you have one of those, it's a lot. And so he has to deal with the idea of, my lawn is overwhelming, it's gonna suck to mow, plus I have to do like four miles worth of walking because you're going back and forth over the square footage of a yard. Then after that, I've got to cut down all the saplings that have grown against the house so they don't damage the deck and the, uh, uh, the foundation. And then I've got to weed eat around um, all the, the trees and poles and garage and, and the house and all that so that it doesn't look like crap. He has the motivation to do it because he wants his yard to look good and he doesn't want the embarrassment of his neighbor looking over into the yard and judging the the lack of 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 motivation is being able to force himself to get up when he's tired i think i'm i'm doing, oh, no, yeah, you're doing really good <laughs> so i don't know in a realistic manner how do you deal with that when you have to also sneak babe <laughs> And the reason I ask, how do you deal with that in a realistic manner is because I think a lot of people think that there's some sort of magical, not even magical. I don't want to be, um, I don't want to like reduce that down to, to some sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's kind of floofy in the way that some psychiatrists say that you need to deal with it. So you need to connect with your inner peace and be able to blood. No, sometimes Jason's motivation is the, the fear of embarrassment when I see it. Is that safe to say? That's crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sometimes the motivation can be, I've got company over and I can't let them smell my house in this condition. I've got, um, something going on. Uh, my dad or my mom is coming over to visit and they're going to give me crap and I don't want to deal with the confrontation. Sometimes that can be your motivator. And I think sometimes that is Jason's motivator because he grew up, I would say, just naturally, well, naturally nice. He's, I've never really seen Jason in a bad mood in his whole life, maybe three or four times, and even that was mild. So he's not a guy who does conflict. And I think that the lack of conflict means that he can be intimidated by people who are more comfortable with conflict. So I, I would think 
that in that your driving motivation lies outside of your body meaning okay. that i'm i don't want to see what other people will react when they see my house or my garage or my lawn or whatever whereas mine i think is more internal for my house it, it's more like um I can't stand the fact that there's dog hair in this room right now and I need to vacuum it, even though pets don't come in this room. It's just from being tracked from other rooms. And it can frustrate me, it can make me angry. Um, I'll have internal um, arguments in my head um, that don't exist um, with Emily <laughs> and saying, you know, uh, the, the things that I say whenever I want to get, whenever I'm frustrated, the things that I want to say and when I want to get confrontational, I have to like subdue those so that I don't because I know she's got ADHD and she's not doing these things on purpose. But whenever you, you are dealing with your own motivation, how do you find yourself handling it? Do you find yourself like just forcing yourself to get up? Do you find yourself waiting for the right moment to become motivated? Do you do it in a rush to prevent other people from seeing the things that need to be clean? How do you deal with it? I think it's a, I think it's a bit of I I like to say all of it, but how I would deal with it normally would definitely write down like a goal list or something like that and just kind of go and just get it up and get it done. Really? It's, the, the motivation part, you're, you're spot on. Uh, it's the, the embarrassment of others' uh, judgment on it. Um, my own is, or my own mentality is like, I'm okay with it, I guess, is the uh, grand scheme of things, but I probably shouldn't be. <laughs> That's a really good point. So <clears throat> I'm okay with how my house looks is actually uh, a hugely important point. So... I'm frustrated with the way my house looks right now. I want to get up and I want to clean it from top to bottom. However, in, in our partnership, what Emily and I do is she, she doesn't work and that's by choice. And I'm fine with that. But it does mean that her part of the relationship is taking care of the things that I don't have the time for. So that we're 50-50 splitting. And it doesn't have to be a 50-50 split. That's a myth. It's just putting in to the relationship in the household as much or more than you take out of it. So her motivation can sometimes frustrate me, even though I know there's a legitimate logical excuse for it, which is ADHD. And that's one of the things I'm helping her with right now with scheduling. But the point is she's actually fine with the way the house looks. And a lot of people are, and the thing is, whenever you get into hoarding disorder, that compounds. And so they're fine. Say you clean a hoarder's house from scratch, right? And you've got it perfect. You've got HGTV looking perfect house. They'll set a cup on, on their end stand and they'll set a book there. And maybe they'll keep their mail on, a, on an end table by the door. Totally fine with that. They, they have no problem with that at all. But then those things remain and then the next mail they've got piles up and then they get a delivery from Amazon and the box doesn't get put away and then that piles up and they're still fine with that too. The problem with the hoarder's mindset is they never get over a hump where it's not fine until it's way too late and at that point they have no room to put their food down so they'll put hamburger or steaks or whatever right on top of another pile of garbage and they'll forget it's there because it blends in and then it'll rot. So their motivation at that point changes. Their motivation started with, I'm fine with the house. There's no really a need to make it look perfect. But then it becomes like an, a safety issue and a biohazard issue to where now their motivation is, I don't want to lose my house from the state. I don't want to get sick from all this rotting food and this rotting meat. So let's go back from the extreme cases because I know most people in here aren't that. I think most people in here are more of the frame of mind of my house is just dirty. It's got some clutter. I cannot seem to make myself get up and do it. Where do you start? <clears throat> I think that's more realistic for this live. 
So let's talk about that. The way I'm helping Emily is what Jason said, where he makes a list of goals. We got a whiteboard calendar that is magnetic to the refrigerator. And Monday through Friday, I have a list of things that I would like her to do that take some stress off of me. And after she gets done with it the very first day, it will take stress off of her for the rest of the week because then things become maintenance and not a cleanup. Those things are dishes completely done and completely put away. Dish drainer put away uh, under the sink. Countertops wiped down, piles of clutter organized and put away. Anything that's not needed and is not decoration gets, finds a home. It finds a cabinet to go into to where it's out of sight. Um, the middle floor of our house gets vacuumed. That's the main floor. I have a, a mid-century modern split level. It's a tri-level. So you come in on this, which is the main floor, then it splits off to an upstairs where there are bedrooms and bathrooms, and it splits off into a downstairs where there's our bedroom and a bathroom and a closet. So this floor here is the one I wanted to vacuum every day because we have a dog, a Great Pyrenees, and we have three cats, one of which is a Maine Coon. So there's hair everywhere all the time. If she can take care of just those things, she'll spend about an hour per day, maybe an hour and a half the first day, and then after that, it won't even take 30 minutes per day, and that's all she has to do. Um, and then after that, your things that you like to do for entertainment, so crafting, uh, video games, anything that you do for entertainment is a reward for the things that you just did. Those are not your priority. Those are the things that you do after your responsibilities are taken care of. So when you get up in the morning, get your coffee, relax, soak in a bathtub, read a book for a while after you're done or whatever. But at a specific time, and I would set an alarm for this, if you're a stay-at-home person, consider yourself at work and on the clock starting at a specific time. Let uh, Set an alarm on your dot or whatever for noon, 11 o'clock, whatever. And when that alarm goes off, you're clocked in at work and you don't stop until the thing's done. So that's Monday through Friday. Once a week on Fridays, we add in vacuum the whole house. And um, that's just in addition to all the normal things she does. Then once per month, or no, on Friday, add in, add in the uh, vacuum the whole house and do the bathrooms. If you keep a good bathroom, you should only have to clean it once a week, like really clean it. So once a month, we do all that, including vacuums and, and uh, uh, bathrooms and also the windows. So she's not overwhelmed with having to do windows every week or every day or anything, because that's ridiculous. Most windows only need done once a month. But if you're breaking it down like that and you have it written on a schedule, it's no longer a, an issue of um, motivation, it's an issue of action. Because now you're looking at those goals and you're like, you have a legitimate list that you can check off and say, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. And then the whole reason for the goals and the whole reason for the list is, um, hold on one sec, somebody say I'm splitting up or something. Somebody said, turn off the router. I'm not sure. Um, so somebody, anyway, um, the, the whole point is that as you do this, the more that you do it, um, it literally, physically um, creates new neural pathways in your brain. And those neural pathways, those new ones that are created, are built out of routine. So it physically becomes a part of your programming. The longer you do it, the, the, the more it becomes a, a part of who you are. And that may take a long time. There's a literal hummingbird that was right on our window right there. I just saw it. It, it just cool. came in and looked in like, you guys doing a podcast? And I'm like, no, hummingbird. <laughs> Get off my window, freak. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, so, yeah, it's about creating routine. And then once you have that routine, that's no longer a case of motivation. That's just what you do. 
I will ask. Uh, so they say, is it like 21 days for a habit to be built, or is it about like one to two months? I'd have to look it up, but I would say I would say that three weeks for me would do it. But I'm also autistic, so I I get into routines faster than a lot of people, and so it's a case of just forcing myself to do it every day, and then before I know it, I'm I've got that routine. So like I'm not a morning person, but okay. if I set my alarm for 8 a.m. every day, it only takes me a few days before I just naturally start getting up at eight. Um, and so whenever I've been playing like Baldur's Gate for the past few days, I've been staying up to like four in the morning because it's the only time I have to play the game. Um, and then I sleep until 11 or 10 or whatever. Um, I can correct that and I can I can make those new routines by forcing myself to bed by midnight at the latest and then forcing myself up at eight o'clock and after three or four days, then it just becomes my routine. I think most people, it would take about three weeks to do that, which would be about 21 days. Wow. But but two months, I think, would solidify it oh, yeah. to the point to where you don't even think about it. It's like quitting smoking. Like the first few weeks, it's going to be, oh, my God, I want a cigarette so bad. But after a couple months, it's like the craving may still be there, but it's just not in your routine to naturally reach into your pocket, grab a smoke, light it up, and have those physical motions. But um, The other motivator um, that I think would help Jason, so I, we haven't talked about this at all before we don't we don't do scripts for these things because I want them to flow and I want them to be be natural. Jason has a very strong relationship with his fiance, probably the strongest relationship I've ever seen in a couple. And Jason does a lot for her and she does a lot for him. So I personally think that the motivating factor that would help Jason in things like the yard or just the condition of the house or whatever would be to provide a palace for his fiance to show that he's doing whatever he can to take a, um, a house that is mediocre. It needs a lot of work. Once it's got enough work, it'll look great. Or once they take it down and replace it with a modular, which they're thinking of doing, it'll look even better because it'll be new. But the action of I'm going to do these things while we're in this situation to make sure you're living in a place that you're proud of would be an extreme motivator on his end. Um, but we haven't talked about that. We kind of talked about it before a little bit, just like in other um, points of life over the last year or two. But the reason I bring it up is not to talk about Jason's situation because he's not living in squalor. Like his house isn't like filthy or anything like that. And his his yard just needs mowed. It's not like it's like a crazy ass overgrown thing. I'm using him as an example because if you have that sort of relationship with your SO, or even more importantly, since this is 90% female audience, um, your kids, having that relationship with your kids and wanting them to grow up in, in perfection in a place that is completely devoid of stress, um, that can be a powerful motivator to make sure that your kids aren't going to school embarrassed because their clothes smell like weed or, or their clothes smell like old um, cat litter or whatever, or that they're, they can bring friends over without being embarrassed about the clutter and things like that. That can be a powerful motivator to get things done. Um, and I think that putting, sometimes putting that motivation outside of your body like that and putting the motivation on what you want someone else to feel, it can be powerful, but it can be a double-edged sword because then if you let your mind slip into the wrong places, you can start to, um, not just regret it. You can start to resent the other person in the house for making you feel that way. So it's like, why don't you guys help me out with this stuff? I'm doing this for you. The only reason I'm cleaning this house is so that you have a better life. And then you start to feel resentment. And you're thinking, you know, even quietly, that the other person is forcing you to do these tasks that you don't like to do. 
And so you start uh, attaching a negative emotion onto them. So you have to be careful with that. I personally have dealt with that. Um, so whenever I do even like a video of me cleaning the house from top to bottom, sometimes I'm really frustrated about it. I'm human. And sometimes I think I shouldn't be doing this. I, I should not be touching any of this stuff. Um, and then there's the other part, once I calm down and I get my mindset together that says, no one is doing this maliciously. No one is looking you dead in the eye and taking like a paper plate and setting it on the counter while making eye contact and then flipping you off. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> like no one's doing that. It's a part of the way the brain functions that just needs addressed. And um, I have to remember as a human to be empathetic enough to know that, um, the, the, to, to understand the state of mind that someone else is in. Sneak vape. <laughs> Yeah, I also hear that, like, taking motivation from, like, so a lot of the people that watch your channel, for example, like, they're looking for motivation through your video to do their own cleaning. Um, and I was just doing a bit of research, and I was, like, just amazed by that. <laughs> like, you can just get it like that. Yeah, so there, there's a lot of people, I get this constantly, that people will put on my videos or my lives while they're cleaning their house because it feels like cleaning with a friend. I mean, it doesn't hurt that I have this voice. I mean, and that I look like this. <laughs> but it's, I understand it. Like, it, it's a presence in the house. So, yeah, if you, um, if you have kids that you can convince to help, um, that, that would be awesome. If you, I have a really, really good way to let, to make younger kids or autistic kids help. I, I have, um, I've been asked this a lot and I've answered a lot on like TikTok lives. If you have little kids in the house and they like playing, like if they have any interest in Halloween whatsoever, they have this built in thing where they like playing dress up and they like putting on costumes. And for whatever reason, kids love gloves like those little latex doctor type gloves. Um, so when you make them a part of the cleaning, don't do like chore time, make it an event. We're going to play cleanup and don't just play cleanup, get them the little gloves they can put on and take them out to Walmart or someplace cheap and buy them a cleaning outfit. It doesn't, you know, if it's, I can tell you from a guy's a guy's perspective, I wouldn't like an apron. It would feel girly to me, but the little girls love it. And some of the, some of the boys may like it too. If they do grab them one, um, let them pick out the outfit, the whole costume. If they want a hat, get them a hat. If they want a hairnet, get them one. Um, if they want, yeah, if they want scrubs, little tiny scrubs, get them scrubs, get them anything that feels like a uniform that can be a costume. And once you've got all that together, then putting on the costume and becoming that person is part of the game. So we're going to play cleanup. You, um, it's not go put on your cleanup stuff. It's we get to play or we get, we're going to play cleanup. You get to put on your cleaning outfit now. Don't let them put it on at any other time. It gets put away so they can't wear it during the day. They can't wear it at random. That's their special cleaning uniform that only gets put on when they clean up. And that's their reward for doing so. It, it takes, even if they've got a trashed out room, um, an hour at most, just to pick up the toys and put them in the toy box and to show them how to fold clothes and put them away or put them on hangers and be a part of that, clean with them. You're the supervisor in that um, cleanup. And so um, once they get the main part down to where it can be maintained nightly rather than cleaned up nightly, then if they want, you can show them how to use the vacuum or you can show them how to make a bed or something that's a little bit more complex than just picking up toys. But once they get into that routine, especially from a young age, um, that becomes a neural pathway that's ingrained in their brain. Uh, no, I did not do that with my kids. That's something I figured out later. With my kids, I was more of a strict dad who came in and said, your room looks like shit. Clean up your room now. Like, and that, that, that wasn't a good way to handle it. 
and it got results, but I'm also six foot four with a deep voice and I can look intimidating to a little kid. And so that was the easy way to get it done for me, but it caused stress for kids because they feel like they're being yelled at or they feel like they're in trouble. And they may be, they may be in trouble because their room's trashed out, but you don't have to make it feel that way. I do have something to bank on that a little bit. So I saw a question earlier that asked like, or I should probably rephrase that. You said that kids, you want to make it a reward too clean. How would you do it for an adult, for a person that wants to make it feel like a reward to clean their own house? So <clears throat> the biggest reward that we've got mentally is the satisfaction of seeing a completely clean house that you would be proud to invite somebody in. But for an adult, if you want a genuine reward, save up some money um, for a night out or for a small shopping trip or for a new gadget, save back some money. Even if you're hurting for money, find a way to save back 20 bucks. Something, something small. If you make more money, if you're fortunate enough to have a really good income, save back a couple hundred bucks. And the first time you do a really big cleanup, that's your reward for the big cleanup. And then you get smaller rewards for maintenance. So for instance, after I got done with the level nine hoarder house, I went out and I dropped like $700 on clothes. Now given I make decent amount of money, but I also don't hardly, I, I used to not buy myself clothes. I didn't allow myself that luxury. And so I desperately needed clothes. And so I finally said, after this one, I am so exhausted, mentally stripped. I'm going out and doing something for me. So my wife and I loaded up, made a day out of it, and we went out and restocked my shirt and pants wardrobe. And that was my reward. But I understand most people can't do that. I understand most people even saving up $20 is a chore. Like it, it can put you in financial hardship just trying to save $20. I get that. So if money is not a thing that you can do, plan something fun, a fishing trip or a walk through the woods or go on trails or um, just go out riding around, go on a date that's, that's moneyless, something. Time can be a really good reward too. Um, so allow yourself like, I, okay, I'm in Jason's case, I would say this, I've completely done the house top to bottom it looks as close to a palace as I can get it to look. I am giving myself the reward of four solid hours of nothing but gaming because now I have the time to do it. I'm gonna stay up a little bit late. I'm gonna play games. I'm not gonna get up and do anything. Um, my reward is time to myself in this game having fun. I'm not gonna do anything for anyone else. I've actually told my wife that before. I'm sitting down, I'm taking some time to myself. Don't even ask me to hand you the remote. I'm not doing anything. If the remote is on my lap and you ask me to hand you the remote, you need to be prepared to walk over and grab it yourself because I'm not moving. It, it involves me doing something for someone else, I'm, I'm out. And that's rare for me to do, extremely rare because most of the stuff that I do is for other people. Jason's garage needed cleaned out, but I'm not affected by that garage. I could have let that go on forever. No big deal. But doing that for him so he didn't have to live in a house that looked white trashy um, was important to me because I knew it would make both him and his fiance feel better. So after that, um, my reward for myself was playing Baldur's Gate 3. I just stayed up till 4 a.m. playing my game and my wife knows that whenever I'm doing that, that it's a rare reward for me. And so she's just like, Hey, I'll be downstairs. If you need anything, just text, you know, I'll be over here playing, um, city skylines Two or rim world or whatever. If you need anything, just let me know. So that's, that's my rewards, but it, it really depends on what you like. If you like crocheting, but you never have time, Make that your reward. I'm going to sit down and crochet for however many hours as a reward for doing the thing that I just um, said I was going to do. But again, that goes back to um, 
in action rather than motivation, because I, I believe most people have the motivation to clean until they get into actual mental disorders, like hoarding disorder or extremely severe ADHD. Um, I believe that the motivation already exists. The, the actual motivation is to get up and do. And sometimes it really is that simple to tell yourself out loud, stand up, get off this couch and stand and then make yourself do it. Once you're standing, it may be you have to tell yourself step two, walk into the kitchen. Just go in there. That's all I'm asking you to do. So you walk into the kitchen and now you're there. And now the motivation or the, the action is broken down into step three, pick a spot on this counter. One spot that's two feet by two feet wide and clear that off. And once you start that process, your gears start turning in your brain, you switch into another mode. And then once you've started it, it, it just kind of naturally progresses from there. Same thing with the, the lawn mowing. Get up. Step two, go outside and stand by the lawn mower. Step three, put gas in it, start it up. And once you push that first line and you see that it's cutting grass and it looks good, now your goal is just to walk behind it. And it just, you zone out and you start doing your thing. Because you'll find like once you start mowing, you can't really stop. No, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it'll it's, look like crap. <laughs> yeah, and it's like you've already started the process, so your brain naturally wants you to finish. And so it stops being a case of motivation. It stops being in action because you're actually in action. Uh, I saw somebody earlier uh, mention, too, uh, how would you deal with physical exhaustion with uh, motivation? Is it chronic physical exhaustion? Or is it exhaustion for something you did the day before? Because there's a huge difference. Chronic exhaustion, chronic exhaustion needs treatment and medication. In which case, I would say you may want to hire help. If it's exhaustion because of something you did the day before and you're just extremely tired because you did what we did with the garage or whatever, don't, don't push it like take some time to rest so that you can do the, that stuff later. If you absolutely have to, do small things. Do something you could do on the couch. Grab your mail and bring it over to the couch and sort through it and throw away all the junk. Um, bring a box in that you haven't opened in a long time and go through that box and throw away what needs to be thrown away and keep what needs to be kept. Small things that you can do that are not on your feet. Um, and just take it one small section at a time. If you're living in a super cluttered house and you're dealing with chronic exhaustion, it may take you an extremely long time to clean up the whole house. But even seeing progress in two foot by two foot squares is progress. And that's a positive thing. I saw somebody earlier mentioned about the uh, take a picture like before and after pictures too to see that progress in person. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good idea. Before and after pictures and I'll tell you what, if you've got the energy to to video it and put it on YouTube, you you yeah. can. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I made a whole channel out of doing that. Um but yeah, you could take them before and after pictures is great because not only can you see it for yourself, you can post that stuff. There's a whole section of uh cleaning Reddit that is nothing but people posting before and after pictures of what their place looked like and what it currently looks like. And you can get instant feedback on it, like really positive feedback. Um, or just posting it on Facebook, or you don't have to post it anywhere. You can just keep it for yourself. But I'm saying if you want a positive um, Pavlovian type of reward, that's a good way to do it, is to get praise from people on the internet saying, oh my God, that looks incredible. How long did that take? And they'll start asking you questions. How long did it take? What'd you use? Um, how'd you get the motivation for it? And you can share that knowledge with other people. And, and it really is Pavlovian. You get a, a genuine emotional and psychological high from that positive feedback. So suck it. Sneak me. Someone just asked if we had a really good relationship. <laughs> no. <laughs>
and you get over here and you podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've I've still banned like two dozen people in the last week. Really? Yeah. Wow. He was just like, "You should treat your kids better." <laughs> I don't know, man. You need to see a psychiatrist and ask him what humor is. <laughs> <laughs> what is joke? <laughs> Earl, eat joke? No, Earl, you don't eat the joke. You, you listen to the joke and it makes you laugh. Earl, eat? No, Earl, don't eat the joke. <laughs> um, I'm going to let Jason talk to you real quick. I'm going to go grab some tea because I just sucked down the last of my tea. Remember the subjects, motivation and action. Oh yes. So if you want to talk about your personal stuff that you use or that you even problems that you haven't been able to solve, that's as, just as good. Oh yeah. So I will mention uh, right off the gate. Yes. Um, so with that dumpster, uh, I don't know if all of you have seen um, that video yet of the garage cleanup, the nightmare garage video. Um, we. I still have that dumpster, and over the weekend, uh, me and my fiance decided to write down a list of rooms that we wanted to focus on. Uh, so right off the gate, I like to list. That's awesome to uh, for my motivation at least. Um, and what we ended up doing is we set a timer for like one hour or forty-five minutes even, and we just went ham on a room. And uh, we over that forty-five minutes, the timer went off, and I looked over at my fiance, and we were like. We're not done, and we don't want to be. <laughs> so uh, we just pretty much uh, finished what we did. It, it, instead of 45 minute endeavor, it turned out to be two hours and we were done. Hey. I just wanna say hi, and I wanna go put out my sweet shirt. <laughs> Team Jason. Team Jason. All right. <laughs> So yeah, the I'm glad I caught I came in on that. Um, that's what I was talking about a little bit earlier. Where once you get going, your brain kicks into another mode and just makes you want to continue because it's like a momentum. It's a mental momentum. And so even though you would tell yourself, "I'm going to cut off after 45 minutes," you're looking around and you're like, "Well, I'm in the mood to work now," because you've started it. So you've forced motivation. The worst thing you can do is wait around for motivation because it's not going to happen. Motivation isn't going to magically just spring on you. It sometimes does. Like you'll get the, in the mood to clean out of the blue or you'll be in the mood to make a really fancy dinner or whatever. But those are more like um, spontaneous, I'm bored, let's do this kind of thoughts. Most motivation, in my experience, is forced. And... <clears throat> Once you force yourself into that, it becomes like a creative endeavor rather than a chore. And so your brain just gets locked in that mode and the momentum carries you through it. So you get what Jason was talking about where they got to the 45 minute mark and looked around and said, I don't want to stop. Like now they're in the groove. And so, but it all starts with, all right, we have to do this thing. Let's get up, force ourselves to go in there and let's start this thing. Oh, man. T. <laughs> they should, or, sorry, uh, somebody <clears throat> said that they couldn't find my channel. It's Jason the Filth, one word. I don't know if it's uh, updated or not. Or I don't know if it's updated yet or not. When we're done, remind me when this posts, I'll put a, <clears throat> I'll get a direct link to your YouTube page, and I'll put that in the description of this one. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was... It's weird. It's probably, like, really <coughs> deep. Excuse me. I'll be here. I'll get it. Um, I think we're going to AMAs now. We've been about 45 minutes, with, uh, which I think is a sweet spot for a live. 45 minutes to an hour. Um, so if you're here for the discussion of motivation and stuff, this is where we're going to end this part, and we're going to go into, like, actual questions and just hanging out. So you're going to see us doing what we do in a normal live, which is staring at comments and answering the questions that pop up, um, which annoys a lot of people. So this would be your bow out, Mark, because um, it's basically me going to be, be going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, I do. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's been oh, 45 yeah. minutes at all. Now, one thing that I want you to do is, um, I hadn't been doing it before, and Emily hadn't, but I forced us to do it last time, which is read out the question, and if we can pronounce the name of the person saying it, say the name. Okay, yeah. Because the people who are watching this back on live, some of them don't have the ability to watch the live chat with it. Because uh, like, if I watch this on my TV, uh, my TV doesn't actually have the option to show chat, whereas the PC does. Gotcha. So, so you will do it. <laughs> you know, Misty, does Jason have um, a nickname for you? We actually really don't have nicknames for anybody in the family. Like instead of Adrian, I call her Adri. That's as close to a nickname as anybody has. We only created the nicknames as a joke for the YouTube channel. So I don't really have a nickname for Jason and he doesn't really have a nickname for me or not ones that he can say to my face. <laughs> Without getting this weak elbow son. <laughs> yeah, Thug was just the name we came up with for the the channel just because I wanted I want nicknames that are the opposite of what they actually are. And that's kind of the joke. So we had Filth for Jason, then we had Thug for Adrian because she's so tiny and sweet. And Drew hasn't been, he's only been on one video so far. Amanda, uh, by the way, thank you for the uh, donations. I saw you did several of those. Thank you so much. Uh, and then I was going to call Drew the devil, but <laughs> me and others have said we would pay for personal pep talks. I need to do my laundry. Um, if you have, <laughs> I, I assume you've been on my TikTok and saw my motivational videos over there. Um, if you haven't, it's, it's worth going to TikTok and finding, I've got a playlist called motivational videos and they are ridiculous. <laughs> You have updates on the biohazard house or the level nine house. I don't. Once I leave those, I'm typically out. Um, at some point, I may go back uh, to the biohazard, or not, no, the, the level nine house, but that would just be out of personal curiosity, but not yet. Um, Jordan, I saw that you um, asked a couple times, what's my go-to lunch to keep your energy up during cleaning? I don't eat lunch. Um, I don't eat breakfast either. I eat one time a day at 5 p.m. I've, I've done that since I was a kid. I just eat one gigantic meal at 5 p.m. Yeah, and if you want to know mine, mine's just uh, anything, like, in, just one thing in the morning. I don't even eat the lunch either. It's just I wait till I get home. But uh, oranges or apples, that's my go-to for morning. What do you, th uh, do you think that would work with motivation for other things like working out? Yes. <clears throat> now, with working out, there's one more step to it, and that would be upbeat, aggressive music. Um, this may sound weird, and it may not be the same for women. It's definitely true for me. I don't work out, but I used to when I was like a teenager. Um, I put on music that makes me want to punch people in the face. <laughs> so like uh, Pantera. Um, Slipknot didn't exist back then, but, you know, just aggressive um and it doesn't even have to be mean music. It's just something that gets you pumped. It, instead of something that makes you go, yeah, it's something that makes you go, yeah. <laughs> if that makes any sense, at least to a guy. It may be something different for um, women, but but the, the basic principles are still the same. You want to, to just make yourself do step one, step two. Get up and go there. And once you start, you're you should be good to go, but... Rob Zombie, how he was a big one back in the day. Made his whole career off Beavis and Butthead. One episode of Beavis and Butthead, like a 15 second clip. They were in Japan, I think, touring at the time. Their manager called them and said, you just went gold. And they're like, wait, what? How? And they said, Beavis and Butthead just said your video was the most awesome thing ever. And then you sold 100,000 copies of your record. <laughs> Wow, that's something I even didn't know. That's super neat. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, music is a big one. Now, here's a, a funny thing, though. I don't clean with music because music distracts me. It's different if I'm cleaning my own house, not on video. 
then I can put on some music and, and do my thing. If I'm videoing, I get copyright striked and I have to narrate over the top of that music so that it disappears. And I don't always know, I don't want to put narration into a video just to do it. There has to be something to be said in that narration that means something. <clears throat> so if I'm doing a house that is paid for in my normal cleaning business, I don't listen to music there because sometimes I can get distracted by the music and imagine myself playing in the band or singing on stage or whatever and just doing that fantasy thing. Um, or I'm concentrating on the lyrics or whatever, and I lose focus on the thing that I'm trying to concentrate on, which is making this person's house look as brand new as possible. And um, so I, I try to make sure that my focus is 100% on the job because I'm getting paid for that job. Do headphones bug me because of some sensory stuff? Yes. Um, I put on headphones when I mow because the sound of the mower is too loud. And then I crank up weirdly like John Mayer um, or the Weebies or something calming. Um, sometimes, sometimes I'll do my metal list, which has got like Seven Dust, Pantera, uh, Slipknot, um, just a bunch of really aggressive music. Um, but the headphones bother me. Like if, if I wasn't on the mower, I would never wear headphones. That's weird. I'm in a different way, my, in my head at least. I like to, <laughs> I catch myself where I'm listening to my laptop, for example, and um, I have my headphones plugged into my PC. Um, I just wear my headphones just to wear it most of the time. It just comforts me. There's um, a TikTok channel called Veronica and Baby Boo. Her real name is Jessica, and she's a friend of mine, and she wears headphones nonstop. How far am I into Baldur's Gate 3? I'm not into Act 2 yet. I am a <clears throat> one of those people who likes to explore every crevice of the universe and talk to every person and find all the hidden stuff. Um, and so I am in the, the dark, the underdark area now where I just saved a bunch of gnomes and am getting ready to fight a bunch of animated armor. So I, I'm not super far into the game yet. I take my time and explore a lot. Well, plus, whenever I play a game, for people who don't play games, this will be a little more interesting. But um, for whenever I play a game, I'll play until I start to almost zone out a little bit or I complete something. Then I'll pull out my phone and go through YouTube comments and TikTok comments. Once I've gotten all those done, then I'll dive back into the game and do another completionist sort of thing, then back into comments again. It's become such a part of my routine that I want to make sure that there's nobody being a jerk off in my comments um, or being trolls or being you know, just, you know, crappy people. Um, and I want to make sure that nobody's making fun of the people I'm helping you know, just in case they're watching. Um, so I'll, I'll do that pretty much nonstop. Uh, hopefully I'm saying this right. Uh, but hello, Ziva. Is it Ziva or Ziva? I assume it's Ziva. about to go to bed and wants to see she loves you. Oh, that's sweet. We love you too, Ziva. You get some good sleep. <laughs> you get some good sleep. <laughs> Brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my son was diagnosed with autism when he was five. He is in his mid-20s now and wears headphones most of the time. It can help a lot of people. Stacy, thank you. So weird question. Do you not use a wet rag when cleaning in kitchens and bathrooms? I was taught this, but wondered if there's a reason not to. We don't use wet rags. We use dry microfiber cloths. And that is because um, you, you don't really need water. Water is used to soften up dirt, but it's not really used to clean. And whenever you're using like Mr. Clean and you, um, you wipe that down, the residual cleaner comes off on the rag. So it's not left on the, the actual surface. But even if it is, we follow that up with our sanitizing spray, our APC, and that's the alcohol Dawn mixture. And that is enough to rinse off old cleaner and sanitize it all. 
So no, it's uh, cleaning with water is a way that you cleaned and the way I cleaned whenever I was younger because you can't really afford cleaners that are good. And um, you can clean a whole house with just water and dish soap. And so that's why people used a wet rag most of the time was because it's a way to soften up um, and get debris off of a, a countertop. What tips do you have? Um, this is Barefoot Amanda Green, um, or Barefoot Mama Amanda Green. What tips do you have for us getting up and just getting or getting started on cleaning? A list, flipping a coin of where to start, or <laughs> um, literally tell yourself out loud, get up. Like as you're sitting there, I tell my, I actually say it out loud. I'm like, get up, get up, get up now, do it. And then I force myself to stand. And then I do the same thing. Walk your ass into the kitchen. And even if you're just standing there, get in the kitchen. So I'll walk myself in there. And the first thing I pick up, that's when everything kicks into place. How long has Deadpool been stuck in the wall? For about, <clears throat> what, last week, I think I put it up? Yeah, I think it was about a yeah. week ago. <laughs> yes. Sometimes I use my bladder as a motivator. It's reliable. I, had, I used to work with a guy years ago that wouldn't allow himself to pee until he completed his task. And so if he wasn't anywhere close, he would start working at double and triple time just to get to the bathroom. That was the weirdest thing I've ever heard a guy doing for motivation. <laughs> Standard of living just went up by a factor of 10, Deadpool light. I love it. The The crack things that are around his head is a sticker, and those were really hard to get on there, but it's really cool. Can you use APC to clean marble? Yes. In fact, it's mainly made for stonework type of uh, cleaning. So you can use it on marble, granite, any kind of stone top, quartz, counters, the thing it works best on is windows and mirrors. Just saw a question just a few up. There we go. Do you have any tips on motivation to getting rid of clutter instead of moving it around by the knitting honey? Yeah, so <clears throat> this one I say a lot. Divide the clutter that you have um, into three categories, and they're all memories. They're not just things. All your clutter is memories, each individual item. It's a good memory, a neutral memory, and a bad memory. Anything that's a bad memory is going to be things like old bills, um, an eviction notice, an old title to, or an old uh, registration to a car that's out of date. Um, well, that would be more neutral. But um, say your old medical bills from a parent who passed, all those bring up negative emotions and all those should go, period. Get them in the trash, don't even think about them. The neutral memories are gonna be things like an old car registration, um, junk mail, things that you look at and you're like, eh, that it doesn't have any meaning to you, it's just stuff. Those can go. Anything that has a good memory attached to it, uh, pictures um, of you know old pets or your parents or something that makes you feel a good emotion, keep it. My main thing in my own house is the things that I have have to have a function. Either they function physically, um, so like a, a mixer, you know, a toaster or whatever, or they have to be decorations that I love. I don't want knickknacks out just to be knickknacks. Every single thing in this room that I have right now is done because I enjoy it. So my Deadpool stuff over here, that's all my knickknacks that I enjoy and their function is decoration. Um, my neon sugar skull has two functions or three functions. One, it's decoration. Two, 
it lights up so it lights my room, and three, it staves off the white hot rage that's in my head that tells me to punch old ladies. And so by having that up there, I haven't punched an old lady at all in like what, four hours. And that was mainly because I've only had it on for about four hours. So I have to remember to turn it on. Otherwise, I'm going to the store and somebody's getting punched <laughs> right in their old lady face. That's what's going to, it's going to happen. <laughs> what have I got against old ladies? Nothing after I punch them. Problem solved. <laughs> Conflict over. We're good after that. We have no beef. Build their duty. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Do I like any horror um, survival games? Um, no. I've never been a fan of horror games. Never been a fan. The only survival game I like is not really survival. Um, it's more like uh, RimWorld. I, I like it a lot. I haven't played it in ages, but I loved RimWorld. Um, Horizon I, 3 or Dawn too. Yeah, and that's more an, an action game. Oh, gotcha. Like an action RPG sort of deal. What if she hits back? Oh, that's her prerogative, but she's just going to get another one. <laughs> Where did I get the sugar skull? Um, I got that on Etsy. Um, not cheap. <laughs> it was like, I don't remember what that one was. The cheapest thing I bought lightwise was like 165, but there was one that went upwards around 300, and I can't believe I can't remember if that was it or not. I think that one was 165. Made the APC and I love it. Well, thank you. That's uh, I got that from an old lady on YouTube years ago, um, and then I've kind of modified it since then. For those who don't know, I haven't I haven't actually mentioned the recipe in a long, long time. So, um, for old time's sake, APC APC stands for All Purpose Cleaner. It's made with seventy percent isopropyl alcohol and five or six drops of Dawn dish soap. Here's what confuses people: I use ninety one percent alcohol and in the 91 percent strength because i use a lot of apc you can buy alcohol in varying strengths the two most common you find at walmart are 70 percent and 91 percent so technically you could just get the 70 percent isopropyl alcohol and just mix it straight with no water what i do is get the 91 percent strength and i fill a bottle about three quarters full with that the rest with water, and then five or six drops of Dawn. There's another confusing thing that people get um, that I, I haven't made clear for a long time. That is just to sanitize and shine. That, that has a two-fold function. Shining is a byproduct of the sanitization. However, if you're not worried about sanitizing and you're just worried about cleaning, you can get away with filling like a third of the bottle with any strength alcohol you want, the rest with water, and then five or six drops of Dawn. And that um, just, its only function at that point is to do basic cleaning and to shine up things like stone countertops, um, glass, mirrors, windows. Uh, but you can make one of those weaker bottles and it'll last you for so long you won't have to buy cleaner again for regular home cleaning for many months. And it's really, really good stuff. But if you need sanitization, just use straight 70% alcohol with, with some Dawn dish soap. Yes, the only thing, the plastic part of the windows too um, was asked. Yes, the only thing I won't use it on is wood. Um, wood is porous and it can soak that stuff in and you can possibly strip down the finish on wood. Also, if you have a weekly painted surface, something that is not, um, um, it's not professionally painted and the paint job looks kind of crappy on it, alcohol can thin that paint down a little bit, so be careful with that. Good paint it won't have a problem with, but they don't have Dawn in the UK. I'm guessing that's similar to Fairy, probably. Any antibacterial soap works. It's just that in the U.S., Dawn is cheap, accessible, and we know it works. Hello, Susan. <laughs> Don't you ever say hi to Jason. 
Bob says, I just lost my mom and uh, have little motivation. I used to talk to her every day. All I can do is sleep. I love your channel. Uh, thank you for the, the donation, Bob. I Are you in therapy? Because if you're not, you really should. Um, not just for the, the psychology of it, but having someone to talk to regularly, um, even if you don't have a... Um, a psychiatrist or a counselor or a therapist um, if you've got a friend who will just listen to you vent they don't they don't need to solve your problems or anything but just somebody to unload that stuff onto um, it, it can work wonders but if all you can do is sleep that is classic depression and I don't wish that on anybody I, I wish you the best of luck in uh, getting out of that but my experience is talk Got cotton mouth. Mm. <laughs> the shirt color suits you, Jason. Thank you. I like blue. Uh, it's my favorite color. <laughs> oh yeah, this is one of the shirts that I bought while I was in Nashville. Back up because there's so much of me and the pants <laughs> too. broke my phone when I did that. <laughs> I saw whenever I flexed, the whole phone went like backwards from the <laughs> force of it. <laughs> it's time to play the game. <laughs> I love these. The, uh, you said the, the bowling shirt comment. Um, they went by too fast for me to read it, but um, that's what I look for in shirts. I love the 1940s and 1950s look of the bowling type shirt stripes. I just think those are great. <laughs> I'm going to open some windows. This may get a little bit um, drony in here because the air conditioner may kick on um, and the units like outside my window, but I've got to open some windows in this room. <laughs> Also, the cicadas are going pretty hardcore, so uh, they need to shut their faces. They're not bad right now, but whenever I do TikToks, it's become a running thing. Because I do TikTok lives at night, and that's when the cicadas really get going. So I'll be like talking to people on TikTok and then threaten the cicadas outside um, my tree. And the threats never work, but I mean, they're, they're going to get some. You hear me? You're going to get some if you don't shut your cicada face. I'll shut your cicada beak. <laughs> Sneak vape. What is your dream cleaning job? I actually have one. Oh, okay. Asmongold's room. Oh. I want to do. I want to go down and clean Asmongold's entire house while he's streaming. And then I just want to mess with him while he's streaming. So I tell him, you stream, do your thing, forget I'm here. And then in the background, I'll just be cleaning and doing my videos and stuff like that. And just recording my own thing. But then also I would like disappear off camera while I'm picking stuff up. And then slowly come up behind him, like peeking over his shoulder. And then back down again. Or like dusting his beard or dusting his bald head. Um, <laughs> I, I would love to do that. But I, um, he's another person who's uncontactable. He's got so many followers that I can't even get a response on an email because, you know, why, why would he even notice? I'm one of millions, but. Do I encounter a lot of preppers in the houses I clean? That's from uh, uh, writer Jordan, Jordan Gorey and Jory Lurie. <laughs> Um, yes, I have encountered several preppers, um, two in particular who saved massive amounts of water and massive amounts of sugar. Uh, for some reason, terrible amounts of sugar. The one had, what was it, 16 cartons of Marlboros uh, saved up at about $110 per carton. Yeah. Um, but preppers are a... Uh, that's a 
special kind of hoarding that that really takes because uh, before I say this there's two types of preppers there's hoarder there's preppers that want to make sure that they're prepared in case a disaster happens but then there are preppers with hoarding disorder who fear that the apocalypse is coming I can assure you that every single one of those and I have met dozens over the year every single one of those watches nothing but Fox News all day. They have it on a loop. They put on Fox News. They don't watch any other channel. And they don't watch not just any other news, no other channel. And they have just been smashed into thinking that the world is going to end. And they end up getting to the point where um, the state has to step in. Because one of them, like the state asked me to do one, um, the state asked me to do one that was like two hours away from me and I considered it, but she doesn't want help. And I guess she has so much water stored in her house that her floors are bowed because of the weight of the water is just pushing down on everything. Then she's got her basement completely filled with water and she'll keep her old bleach jugs and fill those with water. Old kitty litter bottles. She will wash those out, fill them with water, cap them. Um, and it just, it's to the point where she thinks that the world is going to end and she's going to not be able to get anything, no food, no water, no medication. So medication is another thing that gets heavily hoarded in, in a prepping disorder too. Um, they think that if the world ends, they won't be able to take their meds and they won't have pain pills and maybe, uh, they won't have penicillin or antibiotics or whatever. So they hoard um, cabinets full of medication. So yeah, it's it's kind of scary to go into those houses because you're not going to change the mind of a person like that. That is so deeply ingrained that needs massive amounts of therapy. That needs psychological intervention, um, and that likely needs um, medication. And that that that's the kind of therapy that takes deprogramming in the same way that you have to deprogram somebody from like a cult because it's that ingrained no amount of talking will convince them otherwise also thank you nick for the uh, the five also we're not going to get on a tangent talking about those news i just thought it was an interesting thing um but i'm on my channel i don't do politics i don't do religion I don't do any of that. Um, I'm a cleaner. No one should, pardon my language, I'm going to say a bad word here. So get ready to plug your ears. No one should ever give a shit what I think about anything politically. I clean hoarder houses for a living for fun. Like no one should ever give the slightest shit what I, who I'm going to vote for, what news I watch, what politics I follow, what my stance is on any issue whatsoever. I'm a weird dude who cleans. And so my channel is just not going to be any of that. Water Stains on Wood. Uh, that's by Lucy Cat. That one you're going to need to probably um, watch a YouTube tutorial on because I think oxalic acid can get rid of it. Um, but if it doesn't, that may be a case where you have to sand down the wood oxalic acid it underneath the varnish and stain and then redo it. That's that's a hard one to get out. Um, once water stains get into wood, they stain deep. Sneak vape. God, I keep laughing and thinking of that. Uh, what's the guy from um, the soccer show? Um, now I can't even think of it. Oh my God. Why can't I think of it? It was a great show. He was on SNL. Then he did a show where he was a soccer coach in, um, in England. What is it? What am I thinking of? It's on Netflix, I think. Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> The guy who's on that, um, that character existed before the show existed. 
he used to go on ESPN and he used to do skits as that character, but it was a different sort of character back then. It hadn't evolved yet. So the show was made out of that character that he used to do on ESPN. And there's one of them where the woman on news is telling people that they shouldn't do blah, 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 and warning them about something. And the camera's on her the way it's on you right now. And then his head comes into frame and goes, and you do what you like. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes me laugh every time. You can find a clip of it. It's one of the funniest damn things I've ever seen in my life. And then he said, yeah, he, he does the, hey, you do what you like. You do what the sign says and live. And she says, she's like, that says live. <laughs> live. <laughs> Wendelin, hello. Thank you, Sean. I get compliments on my voice all the time. It's almost weird, but I get it um, because it sounds like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Also, I've been working on, um, it's an imitation of Thanos being asked if he'd like bl uh, cracked black pepper on his salad. And it goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jason Sudeikis. That's his name. <laughs> Sneak on You just got vaped, son. <laughs> uh, have I used the pink stuff? If so, thoughts. I have not, and there's a reason for it. And it's the same reason I won't use awesome. I got contacted by pink stuff, and I got contacted by the people who make awesome. And I was asked to do, I was asked to use it on my channel. And um, I told them I, I would consider using it, but I'm going to be honest about it. And it's not going to be a sponsored thing. It was more like an I'll try it out and see what happens. They kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And then I told them, no, I'm not going to do it. They kept emailing over and over. Dixie, thank you. Um, <laughs> did anyone tell you I have the perfect face for radio? I just used that, um, that phrase like last week, too. I love that phrase. But they kept emailing over and over and over again. And then I got mad and said, no, I'm not using it at this point. So then they went into my comments on one of my older video and just started advertising in the comments. So I had to ban the marketing reps for both awesome and the pink stuff <clears throat> from my channel. And so now it's one of those where I'll, I'll never work with them. Like they ruined the one chance I was going to try it. And instead they had these perfectly legitimate people who are like using corporate speak about how awesome awesome is and and using like their taglines that they use on their commercials and stuff. And at that point, it's like, no, you can F clean off. You can, you can take the letter F and get out of here. Congratulations on reaching 270,000 subscribers. Thank you. Nice. We're so close to, I guess half a million would be our, our next big goal. 300,000 is the short-term big goal, but the big, big goal is a million. So I think I want to tier it. We'll do something special at a half a million, and then we'll do something crazy special at a million. Ever tried uh, Puracy or Fabuloso? Um, I tried Fabuloso. It's okay. Um, so my thing is you can clean a house with nothing but dish soap and water and a little bit of alcohol. And that will get rid of... Let me explain it like this. You, there's two levels of cleaning. There's a surface level clean that is grease and dirt. And for that, you need an emulsifier. So an emulsifier... For those of you forgotten, like your high school biology and science and chemistry, an emulsifier breaks down grease, oil, and dirt. 
and breaks it into pieces. Soap actually attracts that to it. So you've got the molecule of soap here, the molecule of grease here. It attaches itself to the soap, which is why you need to rinse afterwards or wipe it down completely. That is why I use Mr. Clean. That's to get the top stuff off. That way the surface itself is exposed so that you can sanitize it. Because before that, the dirt and the oil are protecting the bacteria underneath it. So I use Mr. Clean or you can use dish soap or whatever to emulsify that and get it off of there. Then you follow it with your alcohol APC or bleach or whatever sanitary thing you want to use. And now that's making direct contact with the countertop or the surface or whatever. And then um, you don't need anything else. Everything else that you use in a cleaning um, of, a, of a house for a business or your own house is all specialty stuff. So Pledge would be a furniture polish that's cheap. Liquid Gold and Old English is the same thing, but a little more expensive and a little bit better. Hardwood cleaners are, have a special type of oil in them um, to make floors shine. Bona is there to make um, things like a detail clean, way more expensive, but it's fast. So everything that's a specialty cleaner is done to either do a more detailed job or more importantly, to speed up the job um, that you would normally do with dish soap. Because dish soap does take longer, that's the downfall of it, that's the downside. So Mr. Clean will do the same thing as dish soap, but it'll do it in one tenth of the time. I can spray that on, let it set for two or three seconds, and then um, it's ready to go and we'll wipe off. Dish soap, I'd have to let it sit a little longer. Ari is moving to Miami for three months. Any chance to clean with her? I'd like to, but I've emailed her three times and she does not answer emails. So, or at least not from me. I can't get a hold of her. So I've kind of given up on Ari. Um, maybe once we hit a million, she'll notice that we exist and then I'll be able to meet her. But right now I'm, I'm non-existent to her. What program do I use to edit my videos? I use uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, but at some point I will likely switch to um, DaVinci Resolve. Best cleaner for granite, uh, two-step would be my APC, and then occasionally seal it with a granite sealer. Now the problem with those, there's a wax on, wax off type of uh, sealer and I have to get the name from somebody that I know because I forget the name but it's like $90 a bottle. It lasts forever, it lasts a long time um, but it's really expensive and but it really works to shine it up. How, how's our back feel after the garage cleaning? Tired. <laughs> It was, see, Jason was cleaning a house for the business during like the bulk of that. That's why you only see Jason come in later. He was actually at work um, doing his cleaning part of the job. Then he came back and immediately jumped into the job of cleaning the garage. So he, he was pulling double duty. And then uh, the second day we had a problem with the, the dumpster wasn't there as early as I thought it was gonna be. So Adrian and Drew helped me with like small things and sweeping. And then they finally had to leave because it's like we've been here for hours and the dumpster still isn't here. Right after they left, within 40 minutes, the dumpster arrived. So that's when you see just me and Jason doing it and Adrian and Drew aren't in the video. I'd send them home because they'd been there through you know the whole day for no reason. And then Jason and I just knocked it out after that. Oh, Teresa put a comment in um, in Ari's thing saying she should contact me. Um, that's very nice of you. Thanks. I appreciate it. I think that's the only way we're going to get noticed by any of the people I want to work with. Those people, for those who don't know, would be Ari Katarina, um, obviously. Um, it would be Al Blades would be my number one choice. I want to work with him in some capacity, but it's the same exact problem. I can't get a hold of it. Um, SB mowing would be another one and it's the same problem there. He's too big. I can't get a hold of him. Um, who's somebody else I'd like to work with? 
Barbie and I are going to work together as well as Bonnie from A Beautiful Mess. That's coming up at the beginning of October. Uh, we're going to be working together for four days. Um, who else would I like? Uh, Lawn Care Juggernaut. I have been able to contact him, and in fact, he congratulated me when I hit um, 100,000 followers. And I know that he has Al Blades' number, so I may send a message to him and ask him if he can just pass along the fact that I'm trying to get a hold of him and that I'd like to meet him. But <clears throat> I don't know. There's several people I'd like to work with. Um, I'd like to work with a, a new-ish guy. Um, his name is I Hustle, and he's a lawn guy. Pretty cool. Great work ethic. Cabin on the Hill. I do watch Cabin on the Hill um, occasionally. I, I like him, but I watch Juggernaut a little bit more. Um, Pearl mentioned me in the comments. Um, mentioned me and Barbie in Ari's comments, and I know she's in the middle of a move and all that, but so the other thing is she has a, a social media person. She's so big that there's no chance she has to like read through all those comments. So a lot of the times when you're getting responded to, it's not by her directly. It's for the from the person who's running her social media. And so it really depends on if the message is important enough for the social media person to pass that message along with to um, um, to Ari. Hold on one second. Can somebody get rid of uh, Big Rob? Let me see if I can get it before you guys. There you go. Gone. Sorry for the people watching me staring at these. I have uh, I read slow because I'm stupid. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to do some stuff with Spencer uh, from SB Mowing, and I know he's fairly close. I think he's in Kansas, which is just basically next door to us. Do I ever show the reaction of the homeowner after a clean? I don't, and there's a specific reason for it. Um, I keep all of my people that I help anonymous. And so it's, you can do that with a yard um, because, you know, people may be embarrassed about their yard, but there's like, the yard grows so fast that there's an excuse for it, or they're just like, it's not as embarrassing as having a bad interior of a house. The embarrassment that comes along with hoarding is like a psychological scar for those people. So uh, that, for that reason, I, it's actually a term and a condition of me coming into their house that I keep them anonymous. And over the, the last year, year and a half, um, I have learned how to blur out photos of people in the background or if somebody walks by, I know how to blur those out. For the most part, I just ask them that if there's any pictures out, turn them around or take them down. Um, so most of the time they just do that but if they leave any i blur them out on purpose but it is a part of my condition for cleaning is that i don't tell people who they are where they live what town they're in what they do for a living for well i do the what they do for a living because it it actually matters sometimes but Love your family dynamic. This is from Catherine Patterson. Uh, love your family dynamic. Did any of your kids ever go through that teenage thing where they're embarrassed to be seen with you? I can't answer that, um, but Jason could. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm definitely, it was definitely not for me. Jackie, thank you for the $5 and enjoy your, your work day. We're going to sit here and not work. <laughs> Everybody point and laugh at Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> you got a word. <laughs> I 
All right, we're about at an hour and a half now. I may be um, shutting down here in just a minute. I've been talking to the members. Um, <laughs> I've been talking to the members behind the scenes about how we want to run these lives, and I think I like this this type better. So, like the first, say, forty five minutes of it, we'll talk about an actual subject, sort of like podcast. And then after that, we open it up to AMA and just sitting back and BSing with people and having fun. Um, and then no more than, say, an hour and a half. Because once you get up into the two hours, two and a half hours, like people are going to see that and be like, there's no way I'm sticking around for two and a half hours of this guy just, just reading the screen. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, I uh, For members, I'll see you on Wednesday. Um, for people who don't know about the member section, we have a members-only section. It's $4.99 a month. Don't, 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 don't do it if you can't afford it. Don't. Um, it's just a, it's an extra video per week. Um, I, those happen on usually Wednesdays, sometimes Tuesdays. But seriously, if you can't afford that, don't do it. It's just a way to financially support the channel in an extra way. Um, I don't do Patreon. I don't do Venmo or Cash App or GoFundMe. I don't do Amazon wish lists or anything like that. The way I see it is if people are donating channel or money to the channel, then I want to be able to give them something in return and the membership is a way to do that. So <clears throat> if that's something you're interested in, um, I, I usually have the direct link to the join page on the descriptions of my videos so um anyway members i'll see you wednesday everybody else i will see you on saturday later